Hey, welcome to Amy's Autopsy Report. My name's Amy, and today I am another going to do another review called this one movie is A Bay of Blood. It's also known as Twitch of the Death Nerve, and it is directed by Mario Bava, 1971 film. Um, Twitch of the Death Nerve is actually kind of a cooler name, I think, um, but I really enjoy this kind of cover art that has the painted poster type of cover art. So I really like that. I'm a big fan of cover art, and it just seems like people now, movies now, they just don't make really interesting covers. At least a lot of them don't. Okay, so Bay of Blood. Basic gist of the story with this film is that um, this wheelchair-bound um, countess who's a, you know, insanely wealthy um, old woman. She is, you know, bound to her wheelchair. Um, she's unable to walk at all. And she gets, right off the bat, she gets murdered. And um, what, starts, what ha starts to happen after she's murdered are all these people co start coming out of the woodwork. Her kids, um, her illegitimate kids, her, the real estate um, agents, um, her son, all, all this stuff. All these people start coming out of the woodwork because she's got this high value property um, and she never wanted to sell it to anybody. So they all kind of come out of the woodwork to try and take this, this estate from her after she's passed, after she's been murdered. Um, so that's the basic story of the movie. I don't want to give any more away about it um, because that sounds like a real simple plot, but this movie had a lot of twists and turns. Just when I thought, I, I hadn't seen this film before. If you remember, this is uh, one of the movies that was in the surprise uh, package I received. This is one of the movies. I think I've watched five or six of those movies so far. Um, this one I had not seen. I am a fan of Mario Bava though. Um, things I liked about this movie. The story was actually very complicated. It sounds like a real basic plot, but there were a lot of twists and turns this movie took. And just when I thought I had it figured out, I didn't. Um, another thing I liked about this movie was the special makeup effects were great. It had a lot of good practical effects, a lot of good gore. Um, you know, there wasn't really, I don't know, the killer was... It's definitely kind of a slasher film. Um, there were kind of a variety of weapons used. That's all I'm going to say there. Um, I, I liked that. I liked the, uh, the the music in this movie was great. It had some such great music that I almost wish I had I had a recording of it, like a like a soundtrack or something to this one, because the the music was was great. It reminded the, the the music actually reminded me of when you're watching another film and people in that film are watching like Halloween movies or horror movies. It reminded me of the music that is on that's in the, in those movies. They're always usually playing some weird horror movie in the background um, with really cool music, and that that really is what that music reminded me of. Um, this movie. I, you know, I honestly don't know if there's anything I didn't like about this movie. It really was not boring at all. The story was really well paced. I, you know, sometimes with, with foreign films, uh, foreign horror films, you never know what to expect. Japanese horror films are usually somewhat of a slow burn until a particular point, and then everything just kind of breaks loose, and, you know, there's usually a lot of violence, a lot of graphic gore. Um, this had really good... Um, uh, really good effects and gore in it. The, you know, it's said on the back that uh, when this movie was initially released in Italy, it kind of received a lot of backlash for being too violent and, you know, people didn't like that. But it kind of has mapped the way for movies like Friday the 13th, was, which was made like almost 10 years later, maybe more, longer. Um, so I, th I think that in film history, if you want to go that route, this is definitely an important horror film. Um, I, you know, it's kind of also a mystery film. It's kind of both both genres in one, if, if you ask me. And I think that maybe there is some gore, but maybe people that enjoy like a good kind of whodunit kind of a movie, they, they, I think that they would really enjoy this too. Um, 
I am typically a fan of Mario Bava's films. And I, like I said, I can't believe I hadn't seen this one. It was so good. I really wanted to watch it again, like right afterwards. And uh, I, I, I'm going to give this movie, I'm going to give this movie a five out of five uh, because I just think it's excellent. It was excellently filmed. The lighting was amazing. The soundtrack was amazing. The acting was great. Um, the, the effects were great. I just can't really think of a bad thing to say about this movie. Um, I think that pretty much anybody that likes horror movies is going to like this one. Um, you know, some of his other ones might be a little bit more out there, but I think that this one's definitely like a more universal type of film that, that a lot of people would like, even if they hadn't seen any of his other films. Um, yeah, five out of five. If you have not seen this movie, I can't believe it took me this long to see it. If you have not seen this movie, A Bay of Blood, Mario Bava, check him out. He is the master. Okay, that's it. I will catch you in the next video.